Hello everyone, I'm Ashish Ranjan, an educator on Unacademy. You can follow me on the Unacademy Learning app where you will find my other courses as well. This lesson is basically about the cross-section elements regarding the transportation facilities and this belongs to the course Transportation Engineering. So do not forget to rate, review and share my video and also subscribe to the YouTube channel of Unacademy. So let us begin with the lesson about the cross-section elements. Well basically first of all let us have a look at the elements of cross-section as per IRC. We have carriageway, shoulder, roadway width, right of way, building line, control line, median. We have camber, skid resistance, side slope, lateral and vertical clearances, curbs, guard rails and side drains. So these are basically a few elements of cross section as per and as suggested by IRC that is Indian Roads Congress. Well now first of all let us start with the carriageway. So before we proceed with the carriageway. This is a basically cross section of the road and as you can see over here the center path this is called the carriageway width and next to that you have two shoulders this shoulder and this shoulder and the total of sh one shoulder and carriageway width and shoulder this whole thing is known as roadway width and after that you have this thing this is known as ROW that is right of way okay this is right of way this is also right of way next to that you have building line and next to that you have control line on both sides see building line control line so this is a sample carriageway okay i'm sorry this is a sample cross section of a road now well let us have a look at single lane carriageway and two lane carriageway well about the single lane carriageway you can see this internal thing this is 2.5 meters and besides that you have two shoulders 0.625 and 0.625 meters okay so that adds up it to a total of this length 3.75 that is a roadway width of 3.75 meters okay that is in case of a single lane carriageway that is a single lane now in case of a double lane so in that case you have 2.5 meters this carriageway width 2.5 meters over here also and on each side you have 0.5 meter shoulder 0.5 meter shoulder but in the middle you have a gap of 1 meter so that makes it a total of 7 meters and well let me tell you as per suggested by the IRC, the maximum width of vehicle should be 2.44 meters. Okay, so that is the maximum width of a vehicle. So as you can see in a single lane, uh, a single vehicle can easily be accommodated. So this is about the carriageway. Next we have the width of carriageways for various lane types. So for a single lane, you have 3.75 meters. For intermediate lane, you have 5.5 meters. So for two lanes without raised curbs, you have 7 meters. Two lane with raised curbs, you have 7.5 meters and multi-lane road, in that case, the width per lane is 3.5 meters. So we will see what actually curbs are in the coming pages that is in the, um, in this video only we will see what actually curbs are. So uh, after that you may be able to understand this better. Next, next we have a look at shoulder. So as I told you shoulders are provided next to the carriageway width on each side you see a shoulder over here a shoulder over here so basically shoulders provide support to carriageway and roadway width comprises of carriageway and shoulder widths okay as i told this to you so roadway width is equal to carriageway including the separators plus shoulders so basically carriageway width also includes the separators and those things now besides structural support to the carriageways shoulders are provided for parking disabled vehicles you have energy, I'm sorry, emergency vehicle bypass. You have extra travel lanes when needed. That is example at the time of construction. So at that time, this may act as an extra travel lane. And even for emergency escape route, suppose you have some kind of a traffic uh, jam or such thing. And in case there is an emergency something, so it can act as an escape route. Next you have culverts and that is up to six meter of span maximum. So basically these are normal roadway width and measured from outside to inside of the parapet walls. So basically culverts are provided uh, below the road and they are basically usually circular uh, shaped and they are basically used to carry uh, maybe drains or maybe water from one part of the road to another part of the road. See basically this, that is basically for the passage of uh, water or anything like that. So basically that's why culverts are provided. They are provided below the roads so that even the road has its foundation and um, along with that there is passage of water below the roads so there is so, to, so as to um, maintain the proper flow of the water and if if the span is more than six meters in that case bridges are provided and basically clear way between curbs is that you have single lane bridge you have two lane bridge and you have multi-lane bridge 
okay so there are various kinds of bridges now let us have a look at the right of way that is r o w this thing and this thing that is also known as land width that is basically provided next to the shoulders on each side you can see this so basically land secured and preserved for road purpose is basically the right of way or the land width and it should be adequate enough to accommodate all the cross section elements and it should even provide space for future upgradation so we need to keep those thing into mind as well next you have the building line and the control line so building line and control line provided next to the right of way that is at the edges and you can see this thing and this thing okay and well basically now let us have a look at about the median well basically medians are longitudinal space separating dual carriageways that is in case of a dual carriageway let me go back in this thing you can see there is dual carriageway so in this middle there is a median in middle you can see this thing this there is a median so yeah coming back basically medians are longitudinal space separating dual carriageways and it also separates directional traffic streams that is one going in the forward direction the other coming in the backward direction so it basically separates the directional traffic streams and it should be provided as wide and as uniform as possible and also width depends upon type of road and also cross drainage structure and availability of land and economic consideration so those are the things on which median width depends upon and finally transition length for change in width is also provided okay next you have the camber so cambers are basically uh, to drain off rain water from road surface and also this depends on type of road surface and amount of rainfall okay so in uh, places where there is heavy rainfall in that case we need to provide a higher slope so that uh, water does not uh, remain on the surface and it goes into the uh, ground and also shape of camber um, can be parabolic straight line or combination of these two you can see this is a parabolic and this is a straight line and this is basically a combination of straight and parabolic shape so basically that's why cambers are provided mainly to drain off rain water from road surface next you have the side slope and basically side slope depends on type of soil height of embankment or depth of cutting and also flatter slope is conducive for soil erosion okay but it is costly and well basically now let us have a look at the required slopes at various soil conditions and the first case is slope for embankment in silty soil or sand or gravel in that case the slope is 2 is to 1 where this 2 is for horizontal 1 is for vertical the slope for embankment in clay or clay silt or in undated condition is 2.5 is to 1 in case of a cut slope in silty soil or sand or gravel it is 1 is to 1 and finally for a cut slope in disintegrated rock or conglomerate it is 0.5 is to 1 so these are various conditions and corresponding to those are the required side slopes next let us have a look at the lateral and vertical clearances well about the lateral clearances it is basically the distance between the extreme edges of the carriageway to the nearest face of the structure and what about the vertical clearances that is the height of the highest point of the traveled way to the lowest point of the overhead structure so these are the lateral and vertical clearances next are the curb as i already mentioned it to you before we had um, basically uh, we had gone through this word curb we but we hadn't actually learned about it in detail so over here we will learn about it in detail well basically what is a curb it is a vertical or sloping member along the edge of a pavement or paved shoulder okay they are desirable for urban roads and they facilitate and control drainage important point and they also strengthen and protect the pavement edge and also delineate pavement edge Mo more than that they present more furnished appearance and finally they encourage orderly roadside development so these are a few advantages of curbs these things so as you can see over here these are various types of curbs you have this barrier curb you have semi barrier curb you have mountable curb so basically curbs are present at the ends of the pavement okay uh, that is on the edge and it is usually vertical or sloping member sort of a thing next next are the guard rails well basically guard rails are provided at high embankments to prevent vehicle from running off and they are provided in terms of vertical w beam or box beam along the edge of shoulder or as painted guard stone okay and some common locations of such guard rails are they are usually placed at high embankments 
and also outer side of sharp horizontal curves and also on the approach of bridge so these are various locations where guard rails are usually provided next are the side drains so basically side drains are provided to ensure proper drainage to enhance the life of pavement another point is that surface drainage that is efficiently removes surface water and leads them to natural water channels so this is a very important point regarding the side drains and they are present along the toe of the embankment okay well, let, now let us have a look at the other facilities. Now, other facilities include parking lane. You have truck lay by, bus bay and footpath. And in the parking lane you have on urban roads or on street parking. For truck lay by you have roadside amenities. You have repair or rest sort of amenities. For bus bay you have widening. And bus bay usually avoids conflicts. For footpath, you have footpaths on urban roads. And they are required for the safety of pedestri pedestrians. Okay. So, these are some other facilities and well that's all that we have from the cross sections so in case you have any doubts regarding any of the uh, concepts or regarding any of the topics so feel free to contact me on the academy platform or you can even comment it out on the video and i would get back to you as soon as i can so thank you